Let's talk about section 9.1, an introduction to counting and probability. Um, so this is the last chapter that we look at in this course, and we get into various topics uh, relating to counting the number of elements in sets um, and probability, which um, kind of naturally goes hand in hand with that idea of counting. So when we talk about a sample space uh, in this chapter um, that represents a set of all possible outcomes of some random process or experiment. So if you think of a deck of cards, the sample space you can think of as the set of um, each individual card if you're dealing out one card. Um, so that tells you all the possibilities of what could turn up as you deal that one card. Um, an event is a subset of the sample space. So if we take an ordinary deck of cards and say, think of the event as the set of hearts. Okay, so um, that would represent, you know, the, the different ways in which a heart could come up as that one card that you um, were drawing from the deck. So when we talk about things like that, the deck of cards, the, the subset of hearts within the deck, um, we can talk about the probability of something occurring. Okay, so if you're drawing a card from that deck, we can talk about the probability of drawing a heart, okay, for example. So if S is a finite sample space in which all outcomes are equally likely, and E is an event in S, the probability of E denoted P of E is the number of outcomes in E divided by the total number of outcomes in S. So in that example I was giving about hearts in that deck, we could count up the number of hearts divided by the total number of cards in that deck. Okay, um, so that's, that's the formula that we're going to see come up um, pretty frequently within this chapter. Um, one very important part of this that I want to emphasize is that equally likely um, condition. It says that all outcomes are equally likely. And that's um, very important for this formula to make sense because uh, let me give you an example where you don't have equally likely outcomes. If you think about rolling two dice, so two ordinary dice, and think of their sum, okay, so you roll the two dice and you add the, the two numbers together. Well, the possible sums that you could get are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. Okay, so the integer is 2 through 12. Those are not equally likely, though. You are much more likely to get a sum of 7 than you are a sum of 2. So the, the best way to think of the sample space there is not to think of the set of possible sums, okay, because those are not equally likely. Um, you could, you'll see in this section that they talk about that type of example, and a better way to think of the sample space is to think in terms of ordered pairs of what's the outcome of the first die, what's the outcome of the second die. And so one ordered pair, if you had 2 comma 3, that would mean the first die had a 2 and the second die had a 3. Okay, and you'd want to distinguish between the two dice, maybe they're different colors, um, so that a 2, 3 is different than 3, 2. Okay, so again, uh, what I am uh, emphasizing is that equally likely condition. Now, just in terms of notation, because we're going to be talking about sets and the number of elements in those sets, um, we want an easy way to denote that. So the way that we're going to do that in this course is n of a. Okay, if a is the set, then n of a is the number of elements in that set. Okay, so as an example, if you take the set containing the elements a, b, c, and d, then n of that set is 4. 
Okay, there are four elements. Um, so that notation gives us a shorthand way of writing that formula um, that we just looked at. So we could say the probability of event E is the number of elements in E divided by the number of elements in the sample space. Okay, again, equally likely is built into this formula. Um, Okay, one more thing that this section gives us is a, a formula for counting the integers from m to n inclusive. Okay, so we're assuming m is less than or equal to n, and you want to count the integers from m to n inclusive. So that means we're including m and n um, in the count. Um, so this may seem very simple. Right, but it's very common to make the mistake of just subtracting m from n and not adding the one. Okay, so be careful about that. So, for example, um, if you take the integers from 100 to 300, including both 100 and 300, there are 201 integers there. Okay, not 200. Or 201 and if if you're if you kind of have doubts about that maybe think of it in terms of a, a smaller um, interval you know maybe from 10 to 20 where you could just count them you know and then there would be 11 integers from 10 to 20 if we include both 10 and 20 um, this can be used, you know, for example, if you're looking at a calendar and you want to know how many days are there from a one specific date to another date in the same month, um, and you want to include both ends, okay, that's the important part. If you're including both the starting day and the finishing day, then this is the formula that, that you would use, n minus m plus 1. Okay, now you may say, well, geez, uh, these examples to go with this formula must not be that uh, interesting if we're just given an integer at the beginning and an integer at the end and then just plugging into this formula. But there are some examples in the exercises that ask things like this. If we consider that interval from 100 to 300, those 201 integers we talked about. And we asked how many of those are divisible by eight? Okay. Well, this formula can help us answer that. Uh, and the way that we can do that is we can say, okay, well, let's think about the first integer within that interval that's a multiple of eight. And 104 is a multiple of eight. It happens to be eight times 13. If we look at the end of that interval. The last one that's a multiple of eight is 296, which is eight times 37. So now we know we go from eight times 13, eight times 14, eight times 15, eight times 16, all the way up to eight times 37. All of those integers, those products, um, are in that interval. So we start with 8 times 13, we end with 8 times 37, so we can count them by saying 37 minus 13 plus 1, there's 25 of them. Okay, um, now you could, I suppose, list them out and just start counting them, um, but of course having this formula means that when it comes to really impractical examples where you wouldn't want to count them by hand, um, you know, this gives us a quick way of, of answering that question. Okay, so you'll see some of that in this section as well. Um, and as we get further into chapter nine, we'll see more formulas dealing with various kinds of counting and probability, um, and that'll appear in future videos. Okay, uh, the next one is probability trees and the multiplication rule. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.